The following story is an ongoing encounter, one that will be updated if I see anything else concerning, or if you'd all like to hear a happy ending in which a man actually backs off when a woman expresses clear disinterest, but I am betting on the former. Anyway, this story begins with me attaining my first real apartment. It's cheap, and it's a little run down, but it's the first substantial space I technically owned, and I had been excited to experience true freedom and privacy for once in my life. So much for that. Not long after I moved into the quadplex, I came across my neighbor across the hallway, Greg. Pseudonym I assigned him. Greg had been doing God knows what when I had been struggling to lock my deadbolt when heading to work. He said, So you're the new tenant, huh? and talked with me briefly about how I could label the many keys offered by the landlord which had not really been my issue with the lock, but I didn't care to explain it to him. We had a brief, polite interaction before I hurried to work. I noticed Greg had been middle-aged, dressed a bit sloppily and somewhat awkward. But that's not what turned me away from him immediately. When I saw him next, he had been walking a large dog up the staircase, and I knew then that he had been the one who trailed stinky dog fur all over the hallway and did not clean up after himself. I hate people who make messes and just let them sit. I stopped being friendly with him. Now, while I may be a young woman, I am not inexperienced with predatory men and I know the signs. I had a bad feeling after a few more interactions with him and decided to ward him off the best I could, but I made one huge mistake, I think. The first time he knocked on my door, not long after seeing me for the first time, I should mention he offered to let me borrow his washer and dryer, since the landlord said I did not own one. I wanted to say no since I did not want to owe this man in any way, but I barely had time to clean my apartment, work, and go to the laundromat. So I said yes and asked him to show me which ones were his. In the beginning, he came off like somebody who just didn't take care of himself or his space, but my alarm bells were blaring when he began ranting to me his life story. He started rambling about how he had been abandoned by so many women in his life, and how his ex-wife had been wealthy but kicked him to the curb. When he asked my age, I answered honestly that I'm 20, and he remarked that I had been the same age as his daughter, who oddly enough, also wanted nothing to do with him. He implied they were materialistic and didn't like poor men. With the sob story concluded, he mentioned that he had been the one to repaint my apartment and mentioned that he never got to see the final product. I'm no dummy. I knew it was a ploy for me to welcome him inside my apartment, but no way in hell was I doing that. I finally managed to escape that diatribe, but not without an accidental peek into his apartment. I would confidently say he's a hoarder, and what makes it worse is that I doubt the dogs had any breathing room in a hoarder's two-bedroom apartment. I really wish I could help those poor dogs. Anyway, after this encounter, he began to knock on my door. Often. With all sorts of weird excuses to get inside my apartment or hang out with me. I will try to recall each one, but there were many. Knock one. Answer the door, and he offers me old furniture he had furniture he hoarded, most likely, to which I respectfully decline, and suggest he holds a garage sale. Knock two. Offers me to finish a bottle of wine with him. Again, I respectfully decline. Note that with his apartment so completely hoarded, he would have to go into mine, which I'm sure he knew. Knock three. After seeing me come home with my boyfriend to be fair, my boyfriend is a lot older and often gets mistaken for my father, but you'd think the latter would be more of a deterrent. He offers me half of a watermelon, unwrapped, in his bare hands and implies he just happened to have it laying around or something. I immediately said, no thank you, we just went grocery shopping and the fridge is full. A good excuse, considering he saw us carrying groceries when we passed by. Knock four. Offers me another gift, but I can't remember what. Knock five. I think I've been pretty clear so far that I am private and introverted, but he asks to chat. Again I say no, I need to clean my apartment. Hint, hint. Maybe clean yours or the common area drenched in your dog stenches and fur. Knock six. This one dialed up the creep factor several notches. At this time I had just gotten out of the shower. 
At first I ignored him completely, but he would not. Stop. Knocking. And might I mention it's more like a police knock than a, I'm your friendly neighbor just stopping by, but you are not obligated to answer the door. Knock. Anyway, I have to rush to get my robe on, since he does not seem to be letting up any time soon. I put the chain on the door this time to send a clear signal of you're disturbing me and talk to him through the gap. Unfortunately, it didn't work. He says, I got something for you. And then he reaches through the gap in the door to forcefully thrust a pearl necklace in my hand. I really had to fight to not accept this one because he would not take it back. Who offers a pearl necklace to strangers? Who reaches through the gap in the chain door? There are many more, but you get the picture. At first, I thought maybe he had some social challenges, but the most recent incident assured me that he was aware. My boyfriend leaves to buy some wine at the supermarket on the next street over and crosses paths with him. Greg sees this as a golden opportunity too. Fold my laundry for me, which must have completed the dry cycle only a few minutes ago. He folded them into a neat pile, ignoring the hamper placed right next to his dryer, and presented them to me unannounced. Once again, he knocks on my door, and I ask if I had interfered with his need to use the dryer, but he doesn't answer that question. He offers the pile to me. I take it in a panic without another word. I dump it on the bed to rummage through and confirm my suspicions. He folded my undergarments, including the sexy lingerie. This strange man touched a young woman's undergarments without her permission. I'm freaked out and tell the boyfriend when he returns just one minute later. He's also pissed and reassures me it's not an overreaction. It's a breach of privacy that had been specifically timed when he left. If you come across my laundry in the dryer and you know I'm home, why the hell would you not just notify me that I need to take it out? I would gladly do so. I informed the landlord who promised he would talk with him, so we'll see what happens. Also, there's another 21-year-old woman just below me, but she's surrounded by family. Strange how I'm the one who's targeted for social interactions, living alone and all. Almost like he knows this behavior would be upsetting to loved ones. Update 625. Have not heard anything from the landlord regarding the situation. So much for that. I specifically asked him to inform me when Greg had been spoken with. Unreliable as usual. Greg has ceased knocking for now. I am not sure it's over. He has taken a hiatus twice in the course of two months, but eventually returned each time. I've also been with my boyfriend for the past several days, and he tends to avoid me when he is around. Let's hope he F's off for good and I can enjoy my much-deserved solitude and privacy in my first ever apartment. In 2016, I lived in an apartment complex. The place was great and I had the best view overlooking the pond and tree line. The bitch neighbor that lived downstairs across the hall halls were open finally moved out and I was ecstatic to hopefully be getting a neighbor that didn't complain about everything. One morning I'm out cleaning snow off of my car and my new neighbor, who will call Buddy, comes out to warm up his car and clean it off. He introduces himself and comes to help me clear off my car. He was really nice, we made small talk. Single dad with two little girls close to my kids' ages, and we were both former military. I figured we would hit it off as neighbors. I thanked him for his help and headed out for work. I come home to a bag hanging on my front door with a card and a wine bottle vase filled with fake flowers doused in men's cologne. The card was apologizing if he came on strong that morning, he was just happy to meet me and gave me his phone number in case I ever needed anything. So I text him to say thank you and that he was fine earlier. Buddy says he preferred fake flowers because they last forever. Okay, that's fine. I'm not a fan, but it was a nice gesture. He asks if I wanted to come down for dinner. I thank him but decline. I had a hot date with some leftover hot wings. I figured he was just lonely and wanted someone to talk to. We've all been there. I learned about his medical discharge from the military, his divorces, and then he slipped in his dick size, which is tiny, but can make up for it in other ways. Smy.
I made sure to slip that I was seeing someone into the conversation before calling it a night. I started getting dinner invitations two, three times a week. I always kindly declined. More cologne-drenched fake flower sug at my door at least every other week. I was home with the flu one day and got a text. Your car has been home all day and it's not your normal day off. This psycho had memorized my work schedule. Now he might have been weird, but his girls are the cutest little things ever. They would come over to play sometimes. One evening after the girls went home, he started texting that his oldest idolizes me and wants him to take her shopping for clothes like mine. It was sweet, the only other woman in their life was their grandma. Supposedly she made some joke about him marrying me that he thought was hilarious and would bring it up often. My boyfriend and I break up LDRs are hard, especially when he can't keep his dick in his pants. Somehow Buddy finds out and starts laying it on even thicker i.e. more fake flowers. I'm nice and play it off and tell him I'm not ready for a relationship. I get the kids a dog and so we are outside more than we used to be. He gets a puppy and is outside more than he used to be. Every single time I took Charlie out, he took his puppy out. He somehow always knew if I was out on my deck. He would take his pup outside to train, but would always end up right below my deck then, oop well hey, like he was surprised. One night I had turned the lights out and got into bed and I see him. He's outside in the dark about 20 feet from my window thank god, I was on the second floor, looking up at my window. I froze. WTF. He was out there for about 5 minutes. I closed my blinds and triple checked the door was locked. I caught him doing that a few more times. He would secretly listen to my phone calls if I was outside and text me later about random things I said. More fake flowers. More dinner invitations. I strategically placed my kitchen knives so I could quickly grab them if needed. Baseball bat next to my bed. Awesome dog that would die trying to defend me. I started dating my now fiancé. Buddy was pissed. I didn't give him a chance once I was ready to date. Oops. My boyfriend came over often. Buddy started backing off. Soon he texted and told me that was moving back in with his mom. He was evicted for non-payment. I still see him occasionally in the grocery store and I avoid him like the plague. About three years ago, I was 38 weeks pregnant. My husband and I lived in what we called our village. It was two dead-end streets off a highway with forests beyond the ends of the roads and a small local store at the corner of one street. We called it the village because our trailer park neighbors were my aunt, uncle and cousin's trailer, and then my husband's brother and nieces. Then my grandma's house was on the next street over. My other aunt, uncle and cousins lived with her at the time. My husband and I were 21 then. My best friend, Ray, was visiting from college and had spent the night with me. The next day, we decided to walk up my street down the highway past the store, then down my grandma's street and back through the woods to my house. This was to try to help get labor started as my pregnant belly was huge and my back hurt often. We were talking while I hobbled with her down the highway, when a white truck rode by rather slowly. I knew the speed limit was 55, and this dude had to be going like 30 miles per hour. Through the driver window I saw a bald white man, maybe in his 50s, rubbernecking at us. At this time it looked like there might have been someone else in the passenger seat. The truck was kind of old, but I didn't know the year, make, model, or see the plate. Ray was talking and unbothered until I said, Hey, that guy just went by really slow. I don't think that was anyone I know. She replied with something like, Oh, I didn't even notice that. We were halfway to the store less than two minutes later when we saw him coming back from the other direction. I said, That's him again, get in the grass. Since we were on what would have been his right side, we went down the slope of grass off the road. We are still in front of people's houses because the section of highway is lined with residences between the dead end streets. He passes us slowly again, and when I turn to look behind us, he is slowing down even more, finds a spot, and starts to turn the truck around. I told Ray to run, so we ran. 
I was doing the best I could being super pregnant. We thought about going in the store, but decided to head for my grandma's up the other street instead. Her house was up the hill at the end, but it wasn't a long run. When we got up the hill, I looked back again to see his truck pulling into the store parking lot. We continued to run, got to my grandma's where she and my aunt were sitting at the table, and told them what just happened. My aunt made a police report. I was afraid to at first, thinking maybe I was paranoid. What if it was someone I knew, and they were trying to say hi, and maybe it was a waste of the police's time? Turns out there had been other reports of a man creeping around the neighborhoods. Someone in another trailer park down the highway reported that her kids were outside playing when a man emerged from the woods trying to lure one of them to him. They hollered for their mom, and supposedly she came out and threatened him so he ran off. It continues. A few more times we think we see his truck, but are not sure if it's him, since one of the residents also has a white truck. My family had yet to see the truck so they couldn't identify it. At some point when I wasn't home, a few of my cousins were playing outside. Their ages ranged from 10 to 15. This time the truck came rolling down our little street past them. He turned around at the end, came back up, and stopped next to them. They said he was trying to lure my 11-year-old cousin to the truck, but he said no, and they all ran back to my aunt's house. We had talked with the children about what was going on in the neighborhood lately. One more thing happened before the report stopped. I had my baby at 40 weeks. My husband, his friend, the baby, and I were home. Baby was about a week old. We got a call from my aunt at grandma's house that they had seen the man real up close and personal. My two female teen cousins were in their room. It was getting dark out, but for some reason my cousin went to open the blinds to the window, and there was the man squatting on the AC unit staring at them. They screamed and he jumped off and ran into the woods behind the house. My aunt called the police. My husband and his friend later went out with guns and flashlights to search for him, but did not find him. I believe he was parking his truck somewhere and then stalking houses from the forest. My husband and I actually used to walk through those woods and never had any issues as it was private land that we had permission to walk on. It also seems that this man did not have a preference for age or gender. He was looking for anyone he could get for whatever sick reason. If there had been police sent to patrol the highway or sit on the side of the road waiting, keeping an eye out for him throughout those weeks, but they never caught him. I still wonder sometimes if he was someone from out of town and hope maybe somewhere he gets busted before something bad happens. We might never know. Edit to add. I forgot to mention that we contacted the store owner to see if he caught the truck's plates on his security camera, but you couldn't see the plates from the angle the man pulled through. This will probably get buried, but whatever. This happened a couple of years ago, so some details might be a bit off. My family and I used to live in some apartments and we lived on the top level. Our creepy neighbor lived directly below us. Creepy neighbor lived with his girlfriend who was the daughter of the landlady. Anyways, everything was fine the first couple of months and then shit hit the fan. We would hear creepy neighbor screaming and shouting about how me or my sister threw an empty tampon box at his window when we never did. We look below our porch and see the said box and I think he was going through our trash after we would throw it away. Next, he would claim that he put listening devices in our apartment, and he could hear us talking bad about him. He was honestly psycho. We would complain to the landlady about him, but because that was her daughter's boyfriend, she wouldn't do anything, so we decided to move away. We moved to the next city over, which was about 30 minutes away. One day, a neighbor of ours told us a man was peeking through one of our windows, my bedroom window, and he gave us a description of the creepy neighbor. We immediately went to the police and told them that we think it was him, and we gave them the old address we used to live at. The last we heard from the cops was that he already had some charges against him, and he got deported due to those charges. A man moved in next door I was young, maybe eight or nine years old. I was super friendly with all of our other neighbors for the most part, 
So I went over to say hi one day when I was playing outside. He was really nice to me, asked me inside, and gave me a tour of his place. The only things that struck me were how much neon art he had old lit up signs and stuff like that, and that all of his blinds were always up. In the daylight it made his house feel sort of strange. Anyways, nothing creepy happened when I went in there, but I told my parents that I'd said hi and gone inside about a week later when they were talking about him, and they very sharply told me never to go back in there. It started out with strange little things. If a single leaf from the tree on his front yard fell onto his driveway, he would hose down the whole thing. He looked super angry whenever he did it too, and would mutter to himself constantly about keeping things clean. He would show up to our door super pissed off and yell at my dad or mom about the plants we had outside of our kitchen window that were over the line into his driveway. They were not physically on his side of the property, but sometimes the branches of the birds of paradise would be in what he called his air. We came home one day to all of their pretty flowering heads having been chopped off. Later on, he would complain about our dog in the backyard. She was never actually left there alone, but he didn't like hearing us play there with her. We started finding spots along our backyard fence behind bushes where suddenly everything around it would die, and we'd see little chunks of wet dog food around there. We think he was mixing food with some sort of poison to try to kill our dog. I heard a lot of verbal arguments, but my mom would ask us to go into another room. One time I was outside and he tried to get into a fight with my dad on our lawn and he made us go inside, but I'd never seen my dad look that angry and protective and also a little scared. In retrospect things were clearly escalating with this guy. Then we moved away. I found out later that a big part of why we moved was because this guy had started making threats on our family, and my dad said that this guy wasn't the sort of man who a quick beat down would solve anything. I think what he meant was that this wasn't just some macho bullshit, but that this guy had real issues and that those threats were serious. A couple of years after we moved, my mom told me that that guy had lured his ex-wife to his house, shot her, and then killed himself there. She lived, but was paralyzed and in a wheelchair for life. It was only then that they told me about the fact that he had threatened me and my sister's life. It makes me feel really uneasy to think about myself as a little kid going into this guy's house and realizing that I was the only neighbor he let in there ever before he unalived himself. I can remember the neon signs and the layout of his living room where he unalived his wife with gun and himself. It makes it a little bit too real for me. Grateful my parents recognized the very real threat and moved us away and did a great job of keeping me and my sister from being traumatized by it all and not telling us until we were older. Living next to him was like residing in the shadow of a looming storm, unpredictable and fraught with a tension that clung to the air like a persistent fog. He was a man lost to his demons, consumed by the grip of addiction that seemed to dictate his every action, painting his life in strokes of chaos and despair. It began with whispers, stories that circulated in hushed tones about how he had beaten his girlfriend, a prelude to her sudden disappearance. No one knew what had happened to her, and as days stretched into weeks without a word, an uneasy silence fell over the neighborhood. That silence was our first indication that the man next door was not just troubled, but dangerous. Our encounters with him grew increasingly bizarre and frightening. He harbored an irrational fear of our chickens, accusing them of conspiring against him as they pecked and scratched innocently through his yard. But it was our dog, Bella, who bore the brunt of his growing paranoia. After she barked at something in his backyard, a natural reaction from any dog he poisoned her, Miraculously, she survived a testament to her resilience and perhaps a stroke of luck that the poison wasn't lethal. His hostility wasn't confined to animals. My mom bore the brunt of his verbal assaults, a barrage of words so vile and unwarranted that it left a permanent scar on our sense of safety. And then there were the stares, those unnerving, unblinking gazes that followed my sister and me whenever we stepped outside. One night, as I played in the front yard, I caught his silhouette looming in the darkness, watching me without movement or sound. 
Fear gripped me so tightly I could barely move, the memory of that night etching itself into my mind. His disturbances escalated, nights filled with his shouts echoing through the darkness, a repeated cry of F off that became the haunting soundtrack of our lives, playing over and over like a broken record. The law had already tangled with him, stripping him of his license after a series of reckless acts, from driving without a license to hurling objects at neighboring houses and peering into windows under the veil of night. The story of how he broke his arm was one of many bizarre tales that circulated, a stark reminder of the dangers of his unchecked addiction. In the end, the decision to move became our only path to peace. Yet, even after we left, he attempted to reach out from the shadows of our past, lodging complaints about Bella's barking to the council, despite her being miles away for weeks. It was a final, futile attempt to disrupt our lives, a reminder of the shadow we had stepped out from under. Moving away didn't just mean a change of scenery, it was a rebirth, a chance to breathe freely without the weight of fear and unease. Yet the memory of living next door to him remains, a stark reminder of the darkness that exists, often hidden in plain sight, within the folds of any neighborhood. My story begins in 2014, when we had to leave our nice seaside apartment, which we really liked. With limited options, we settled on a house that had been divided into three flats, and we shared a small hallway with our neighbor. Even though the flat had a fresh coat of paint, it didn't take long for us to realize that there were numerous issues with the place. We found out that the lock on our back door was broken, which caused a big problem for us. We reported this issue to the agency, so the next day, they sent a guy to fix the lock. While he was working, he asked me if I had met our new neighbor. I told him no, I hadn't. He said, he's a very weird guy, so be careful with him. Later, I met him, and yes, he looked strange. I couldn't tell if he was 30 or 60, but he was always quiet and polite. One day, funny enough, it was April 1st and we came home from work, my boyfriend and I. Our neighbor and his friend were leaving the house as we arrived. We were expecting friends to come over that evening, so we cleaned the house. Then, after finishing the cleaning, we sat down to relax. Suddenly, I heard a weird banging noise coming from the neighbor's flat. It was quite strange, especially because it was April Fool's Day, and we weren't sure if it was some kind of prank or if something unusual was really happening. Someone was walking down the stairs, and it sounded like they dropped a really heavy bag. But then I heard it again and again. I thought, they can't be this clumsy, but I didn't worry too much. Right after this, I saw my friends coming in through the window. When I went to open the main door for them, I saw something shocking. There was blood everywhere, even a bloody handprint on our door. I told my boyfriend, there's blood everywhere. He said, close the door. Then, my neighbor calmly said to me, I stabbed the woman who usually comes to see me. The woman was lying in the middle of the road in front of the house, not moving at all. At that time, the ambulance and the police came to the place. They took my neighbor, closed the house, and even blocked the whole street. Then, they told us we couldn't use the hallway because it was a crime scene, so we had to stay in the house for a while. I also saw blood coming down from the drain pipe in the backyard. About five weeks later, the police came to our door. They wanted to know if we had seen our neighbor because he had left the hospital, and they were worried about our safety. They told us to call them right away if we saw him. The hallway light had been broken for a while, so I asked my boyfriend to fix it, as I didn't want to accidentally meet the neighbor in the dark. But later, we discovered it wasn't working because it was connected to the neighbor's electricity, which was turned off. While we were in the hallway, the neighbor opened his door to see what the noise was. We were surprised. When did you get home? We asked. We didn't hear you come in. Then he said, I didn't use a key, that's why. If you ever lock yourselves out, just let me know. I can open the doors for you, too. I think this was the moment when we were really scared for our lives. He told us he came home because he felt perfectly fine and didn't think he should be in a mental hospital. Then he said he didn't want to kill the woman. He just stabbed her in the leg because she made him angry. 
The police never told us anything for sure. They just mentioned it was almost like a murder investigation. We went back to the flat, and we were too scared to even call the police because it would be obvious that we reported him. Later that day, the police came and took him with them. They scolded us in front of him because we hadn't reported his actions. After that, we never saw our neighbor again, and even now, I'm not sure what happened to him. The other problems in the house got worse too, so we moved out as soon as we could. I don't know my neighbors. I'm not exactly a social butterfly and my hours are strange, so I couldn't even tell you my next door neighbor's name. My social media is locked up tight and it's under a different name. What I'm saying is nobody in my neighborhood knows me beyond an occasional wave. A few months ago, I was sitting in my bedroom and overheard two of my neighbors talking outside my window. They were discussing some damage done to one of their properties and trying to figure out who might have done it. One of the women said something along the lines of, well, it wouldn't be the woman who lives here. She. And she then proceeded to spout off this ridiculous amount of information about me. My age, my marital status, the details of my recent divorce, what my work schedule is, what my goddam sleep schedule is, my religion. She even knew private information about my mother, who has only been to my place a couple of times. I don't know this woman, I've never spoken to her, but she knows things about me that she has no way of knowing. I have no idea how. Now every time I see her, the hair on the back of my neck stands up. My neighbors grow pot in their backyard, which isn't that uncommon since we live in California. One night someone robs them for their plants and apparently hopped the fence into our yard to make their escape. So neighbor dude, thinking we having something to do with it comes banging on our door at 3 a.m. He's screaming about how he's gonna chop us all to pieces and burn down the house with us inside. It was pretty freaky. Cops were called, he denied everything and apologized the next day. That didn't stop him from telling the entire neighborhood we robbed him. Thanks dickhead, still getting looks to this day. I had this neighbor who had like six white Astro vans in his front yard which was creepy as F. He had about a half acre of land that he never tended to and the entire plot was just weeds. One summer the weeds grew so big that you oils barely see his house. I woke up early one morning about 6 a.m. and I hear a weird ass noise and I couldn't figure out what it was until I went into the bathroom and it got louder with a certain burning smell to it. I look out my bathroom window and my weird ass neighbor was burning the weeds away in a huge ass burn pile. That's normal for rural areas and such, but this idiot had no control over this fire as it was like a really tall flame surrounded by tall tumbleweed like weeds. I woke up my parents to show them that idiot, and we all had a good laugh about it. But things could have gone south quick. I've had a neighbor kill and dismember his roommate in the upstairs bathroom late one night and stored his body parts in the refrigerator in the garage. I had another neighbor right across the street from me that held the Columbia Sportswear chairwoman hostage for ransom. I also had another neighbor in the nearby cul-de-sac that unalived himself in the garage and laid there for at least a year before anyone even discovered him. I still remember when the cops opened the garage door and you could smell his body from a long ways away. Oh, and a couple weeks ago, someone just down the street completely destroyed their house and car because they were having some sort of PTSD episode. He's an Iraq war veteran or something like that. Not that old, but I remember I came home from work one night, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm hearing sounds of glass smashing, things flying out the window, and a kitchen stool being sent through the windshield of his car. He demanded that someone called rescue rangers or whatever because he needed a heart transplant. I have pictures of the house. He wrote all this crazy shit on his front door with a sharpie before they took him away to the loony bin up in Washington or whatever. In my house growing up, we had a little apartment in one side that my dad rented out. 
It was barely big enough for one person. Small living room, bedroom, tiny kitchen, and bathroom. That's it. One year we had this guy living there, I'll call him um. M was about 25 years old. He was a weirdo. He would sometimes just look at you and start laughing for no reason and other odd stuff like that. But whatever, he didn't bother us. My dad let him move in. So about a month later, a much older, probably late 50s woman moved in. That's when it got weird. M introduced her to some members of my family as his girlfriend and others as his mom. We would hear them at all hours of the night and day watching TV and literally howling with laughter. We weren't even trying to eavesdrop, but we had no choice but to hear their conversations because they spoke so incredibly loud about the weirdest things. At one point my dad went in there to do a repair on something, and he happened to notice that they were sleeping in bunk beds. Still unsure whether this woman was his mother or girlfriend, we were very confused. One day they just picked up and left. I accidentally moved into a hippie commune. I say accidentally because I moved in in March when it was too cold for them to be out much. When summer came, it was like living at Burning Man. Hippies came from all around and hung out 24-7 at the pool. They did lots of drugs, drank heavily, started fires, blared music at all hours, danced naked, oh, and they were mostly old hippies. They would leer, they trashed my yard while I was out of town, and two of them assaulted one of their girlfriends, who was so stoned she didn't even know what day of the week the assault happened. One of them was a registered S offender illegally living there in his RV because we were across the street from a school. The FBI and D raided one of my normal neighbor's house because the hippies were shipping drugs to his address via FedEx and grabbing them before he got home. I was so glad to move out of there. Tom. Tom lived in a small bungalow at the back of our share house. Me and five friends, mostly ladies, shared a huge house that was falling to pieces. On the third night, I was finally unpacking the last of my belongings, and it was just about midnight on a Wednesday when the police knocked on my door. I was worried as I had music playing and was at the front of the house. The police ask for Tom and begin to enter before I tell them he is essentially on a separate property, and we don't know him they assumed we did and were pretty rude. He turn off the lights in the kitchen and look through the kitchen window and watch the police knock on his door. I sit down to avoid being seen and listen to him be taken away. I assumed he was on drugs because he made lots of jokes. When I go upstairs I see they have taken him in an ambulance. We all speculated drugs or mental health, but just let it go. Then my housemate met him out the front. She was going to bring her drum kit in from her car, so he offered to help and she pretended that she was leaving them in her car for later. He proceeded to show her a knife wound in his stomach. She did not provoke this conversation or set it up in any way. Then we had a house party. Everyone was in the kitchen, and we hear violent screams of things like, I'm going to kill you, etc., and the sound of a man crying hysterically. We took the party upstairs and didn't hear from him again. This part is my favorite. My housemate was doing an assignment for university at 2 a.m. when she hears a knock at the door. She gets up and opens the door like an idiot and a young girl is there. Basically, she discovers the young girl met Tom eight months ago at the traffic lights near our house, and at 2 a.m. eight months later, she decides to hit him up on an offer of weed and beer. The girl proceeds to go around, meet with Tom, and go inside. My housemate turns off all the lights and goes upstairs where she can hear digging coming from his backyard. We saw a few girls come and not always saw them go, so that always gave me the creeps. He ended up getting a girlfriend and her son set our bins on fire. Eventually he moved out and so did we. Weirdest part was that we always imagined him as a creep, but he was actually super hot. He used to wash the dishes shirtless and look into our kitchen good times. As a kid, I recall a teenager across the street who would play the drums, loudly, without much rhythm either. They didn't have a C so the windows were open all the time, strange for Houston in the 80s, 
but it was a slightly shady and low-income part of town. Next door was an abandoned house with pot-smoking squatters inside. One day, during a ton of offbeat drumming, I see a man from the pothouse walk across the street to the drummer's house with an effing rifle in hand. Shaggy opens the door without knocking and walks in nonchalantly. Drums stop. Shaggy walks out and returns to pothouse. I never saw any cops called. That was how they handled issues back in the day. Guy claimed to be the illegitimate son of a prince of Egypt, but lived in a shitty suburb in Northern California one day got it into his head to make nunchucks. I don't mean like pieces of wood with a rope between them. Sued steals a shopping cart, cuts the handlebar off with a torch, then cuts that in half and proceeds to weld a chain between each half. Also, he's 13. Both his mom and his stepdad are white as F. Normal suburbanites with normal white kids' parent jobs. Meanwhile, their kid has got him welding skills. Maybe there's something to his Egyptian print stories he showed me when he was done. He even rather artfully wrapped black electrical tape around each side so they even looked badass. But seriously, steel and aluminum tools of serious potential death. Crafted in a garage by a 13-year-old when nobody was looking. I guess not really creepy, but looking back I suppose I'm lucky my high school didn't get shot up. I lived in housing projects as a child 4 5th grade, and we had a neighbor that was an older woman, probably in her 50s, that had a son probably in his 20s. From the very first day I met this guy, I knew he was weird. He was really slow and creepy. One day my little sister was playing outside and he came up and started talking to her. She was probably about 7 or 8 years old at the time. There was an abandoned swing set in the creepy guy's front yard. But the swing had been taken off, so it was practically just a pole you could climb and sit on. We used to do it all the time as kids. He continues to take my sister and put her on the pole, where she hung by her arms, and then pulls her pants down. But thankfully my mom came outside and seen it before he could go any further. She screamed at him, and my sister jumped down crying while the guy ran inside. My mom goes over there after calling the police and confronts his mom with a baseball bat. We made a report, but the court said there was nothing we could prosecute him for because he actually had papers stating that he had mental disabilities, autism, or something like that. So there was nothing that could be done. That shit sickens me to this day. In my opinion, he should have been arrested like anyone else. But I live in small town, USA, where the law rules everything. He was so creepy. They moved a few months after that incident, but I'll never forget it. We had this neighbor who moved in next door to our house. Every time I came out of the house to get my bike to let the dog or just water the garden, he would wolf whistle, wink at me, tell me how beautiful my body was and do other gestures. I was between 13 and 14 at the time. If my parents were around, he would act like a mature adult, not a pet file. So my parents couldn't really do anything against him. But after my birthday, my dad gave a brand new pocket knife, told me how to use it, and only use if I'm in trouble. So I got backyard later, and their mister doing all his crude gestures. I just take out the knife and show it to him. He stopped bothering me after that and moved away after a month. We had this old lady whose house sat pretty far back at the end of a long driveway. We could see her house from our backyard, but it was blocked by quit a few trees. But for some reason she was constantly calling my parents and tattling on me and my brother for doing things we probably shouldn't be doing. Like jumping on the trampoline during a thunderstorm or climbing up a tree while my brother threw bouncy balls at me. Then one day she invited us all over for a BBQ. I went inside to use the bathroom and snuck into her bedroom because I heard she had a large collection of beanie babies. But then I noticed something that still creeps me out to this day. There was a chair facing one of the windows with some binoculars sitting on the windowsill. The window faced our house. That's how she always caught us. 
because she was always watching. Oh, I didn't even think of my neighbors now. I live in a triplex. One guy next to me and my fiancé is a veteran. Doesn't leave much. Blasts super loud techno at 3 a.m. almost every night for the past two years. Had to put a rug on our wall to block out the sound of his hardcore masturbation or whatever the F those sounds were. Guy on the other side of us is a lil off too. At first he ran a martial arts studio out of the bedroom and he lived in the kitchen or living room really small place. One bed, one bath, living room or kitchen with a bar and 800 square feet. He decorated our flower bed with badly spray painted martial arts trophies and Buddha statues. Also put a huge banner on our shared deck for his martial arts studio. Became a huge joke to everyone who came to my house. Don't think he got much business though. We're in rural Appalachia in the middle of the mountains in the outskirts of the nearest town, so he shut that down pretty fast. Now he just practices guitar really early in the morning, which usually wakes me if my fan isn't on. But hey, at least the guy is doing things to better himself. Can't hate on that. God only knows what they hear from us too. There have been many situations in my life that could have been avoided if I chose to be an asshole instead of being nice and well-mannered. It goes without saying that this situation would have been avoided if I let go of the idea that I should always be polite. This is not a story of assault or life-threatening danger, but it was definitely creepy and in my mind could have escalated to something more serious. The situation went like this. I used to be very friendly with an elderly man and my neighbor. I felt bad because he seemed really lonely, as if he never had any company. At first he would want to hug every time he saw me, which I didn't think was strange because hugging as a greeting or goodbye is very common where I come from. He eventually asked if he could have my mobile number in case anything happens and he needs help. He told me he had suffered a stroke years ago, and both he and his wife were prone to falls that would result in broken bones, so I gave him my mobile number. I would want someone to help my elderly relatives if they needed help in an emergency. He would then frequently ring my doorbell to share leftover food with me, which I appreciated at the time. Then he would come to my apartment almost daily and ring my doorbell until I answered the door. He once rang six times. He also once invited himself into my apartment when I opened the door and proceeded to remove his shirt to show me a scar on his chest. I told him that I believed him when he said he had a scar and he did not need to undress. He took off his shirt anyway. If he did not see me for more than a day or two he would call me to see where I was and what I was doing. By this point when he would hug me, he would sometimes lightly bounce up and down or rock side to side. When that would happen, I would push away and tell him that I don't need a hug. I would make up an excuse like I had a cold or flu-like symptoms. This was pre-pandemic and did not want to spread anything to him. Shortly after this, three separate things happened on separate days that make my skin crawl when I think back on them. First, he put his hands on the sides of my head, gently squeezed, rubbed his hands on my hair, and pulled my head towards his. I extended my hand against his shoulder and gently pushed away. I told him that I am not a touchy person and do not really like to be grabbed. This is true and not just something I was saying in the moment. Second, he ran his fingers through my hair after I gently pushed away from his dancing hug. I told him again that I am not the type of person who likes physical affection. Last, he gave me a regular hug, no weird movements but then caressed my face with his hand and pinched my nose. I felt so uncomfortable and gross. I pushed away and told him that I had to get back to work. He slowly but firmly grabbed my arm and tried to initiate another hug. I pushed him away again and told him that I do not need another hug. Each of these three things happened in my apartment, not on the sidewalk in plain view of others. After that last encounter, I made the decision to never allow him within arm's reach of me again. I felt and still feel that his actions were gradually escalating. I did not care to let things escalate any further. When he would see me walking my dog and approach us, 
I would quickly walk the other way and not respond to him. He eventually realized I was avoiding him and followed me back to my apartment. He asked me if it was something he said. I was direct and told him that I do not like being touched, yet he insisted on touching my face and hair in ways that made me uncomfortable. He responded with, I wish you said something. I did. Multiple times. He still tries to talk to me when he sees me walking my dog, but I continue to completely ignore him. There are individuals who take advantage of certain assumptions younger people tend to make. I made the assumption that I should be unquestionably kind and social with this man since he was elderly and lonely. I made assumption that my neighbor was just a vulnerable and frail person. I made the assumption that nothing threatening would happen due to his fragile health. And I admit it's entirely possible that I am reacting too much. So how does this pertain to being an asshole sometimes instead of always being a well-mannered female? The truth is that I did begin to feel uncomfortable long before those three incidents took place. I felt uncomfortable enough to ignore him when he would ring my doorbell again and again. I felt uncomfortable enough to ignore his phone calls. I felt uncomfortable the moment he gave that first dancing hug. Yet every time I chose to ignore that feeling of discomfort as it would have been seen as me being impolite to an elderly person. In those moments, I valued the optics of good manners more than what my gut was telling me. I will always choose to be kind to others. But going forward, I will be more alert and no longer choose appearing to be polite over my own sense of safety. My roommate 22 female and I 23 female recently moved to a new apartment. The location is amazing, the apartment is pretty nice, and the rent is doable. On one of the days we were moving, we met our across-the-hall neighbor, Russell. He came out shirtless to greet us and insisted that we would have to come over one day and try his homemade alcohol. That day was today. I work from home and my roommate goes to the office to work, so I was home alone. My doorknob is broken so the door is always slightly ajar. I put in a maintenance request yesterday, so when I heard a series of knocks on my door, I assumed it was maintenance and opened the door without checking. But alas, it was Russell coming to chat. Apparently this man doesn't own a shirt. Everything was normal until he went into his apartment to get the alcohol and insisted on giving me a tour of his bachelor pad. It was then that I learned he was recently divorced from his fifth wife. I'm a people pleaser so I said yes, but my gut was telling me no the entire time I was there. Keep in mind he caught me off guard so I am barefoot, slightly high, and I don't have my phone. Let me set the scene. You enter the apartment with a kitchen on your right and then it opens up to the living and dining area. The kitchen was full of random jugs of green liquid. Instead of a dining table, this man had a full-size statue of himself, a folding table, and a single folding chair. In the living room, he had the most casting couch sofa I have ever seen, an 85-inch TV held up by Home Depot boxes, and three floor-to-ceiling framed photos of himself. He insisted on giving me a tour, and that's when I saw the bedroom. Red walls and a black and gold tufted bed rigged with lead lights, red flag. He brought me back out to the living room to show me his YouTube videos, gave me one of the cheapest, most trashy outfits I've ever seen, and asked me to model it for him. I knew I needed to leave, but whenever I would move closer to the door, he would get in my way. I didn't have my phone, so I didn't know what to do. Eventually, he started asking me to have sex with him, and I thought to myself how easy it would be for him to take advantage of me in that situation. I was actually terrified. I did what any normal person would do and said that my mom was coming over so I needed to leave. He gave me a jug of the green liquid, which is definitely prison wine and the outfits, and told me to come back later with my roommate so we could have some fun. I have to live here for 12 more months. What do I do? I am a 25 female living in a relatively safe country with low crime rate in Asia. This incident took place around 5-6 years ago, 
on one afternoon when my mum went out to run errand, not far away from home, and I was home alone. First of all, I live in an apartment block where there are a total of six units each floor. Delivery man or salesman often mistake my living room window along the common corridor as my neighbor's window. My neighbor's living room window is actually inside their house. I remembered I was in the living room scrolling through social media on my phone when I heard someone knocking on my neighbor's door. I looked out from my living room window which is sort of translucent due to being tinted. I saw two men based on their height and silhouette standing at their doorstep, one of them shouting, delivery. After knocking a few times, no one answered the door, so they prepared to take their leave. But this moment, one of the men whom passed by my living room window literally tried to peek in through a scratch on the window to get a glimpse of my house. Both of his hands were on my window, with his face pressing on it, and I saw one of his eyes. This scared the hell out of me. I immediately crawled on the floor and went hiding in the room closest to living room, calling my mom briefly telling her what happened and asking her to quickly come home. After hanging up, I stayed in the room closely listening to sounds and occasionally stick my head out to check is the guy still there. I think about 10 or 15 minutes later, my mom finally came home. She told me she just ran into the delivery man at the ground level lift lobby. Apparently, my mum was fuming with anger after listening to the full story, so she looked out of the kitchen window and actually saw that creepy delivery man looking up at our unit. She gave him a deadly glare before the man went into his van and drove off. After that incident, we would always cover our living room window with something whenever we are not at home to prevent people from peeking in again. so I live in a house with a medium-sized yard in it that's fenced in. If you go out the back door into the yard, there are some houses with backyards on the far end. A small complex, it's basically five houses all squished together into one that shares walls on the right side of the yard and a street on the left. I've lived here for a few years and I've had no problems, but about nine months ago this guy moved into one of the units in the complex. He seemed like a really normal guy, probably late 20s to early 30s, with nothing really notable about his appearance. Just looks like an average guy, things started out okay. But I've noticed in the past several months that he likes to stare at my house and family in a very eerie way from his upstairs window. The first time I noticed, I had stepped out to let my cat use the bathroom she was astray when I got her and prefers to go outdoors rather than use the litter box, so I kind of have to go out there with her. I usually just sit on my back porch and wait for her to come back up when she's done. I'm sitting there one night and I have this really unsettling feeling of being watched. I started looking around and I saw the dude up there in his window. He had the lights on and the curtain pulled back just enough so that I could only see the left half of his body while he stood up against the window just staring. The complex is pretty close so I could see him clearly. I decided to brush it off, but turned off my back porch light anyway thinking that maybe the light was bothering him. He turned off his light and that was that. The next morning I went out again to let my cat out and I feel eyes again. I looked up in his upstairs window and he was standing there in clear view just staring at me not moving. It's been this way for a while where I'll need to go outside for one reason or another and I'll feel the eyes and he's there. He moves around so I know he's not a mannequin or something, but he is always in that window, either sitting or standing. I've also seen him up there with a set of dumbbells sitting in a chair and working out while he watches us, and staring into my yard with an expression that's really blank, but also wide-eyed. If I move he turns his head and follows me with his eyes. He's always up there day or night, and I can always see him because he keeps the light on at night. Mind you, I'm not just staring into his window, in fact I try not to look at him at all lest it encourage him. I can just see him out of the corner of my eye because everything is so close. I have a two years old niece who I babysit on occasion and she likes to play in the yard. When we go out there, he watches her instead of me. It's gotten to the point that I don't want to be in my yard anymore, especially with my niece. I mean, with the houses being so close together, I've accidentally made eye contact with my neighbors several times before, but it's never been like this. 
Maybe I'm upset over nothing, but something about him really puts me on edge. Also, it's really strange to me that he never seems to leave that room and his expression is just really strange. The best way to describe it is that it looks like he's in a trance, but hyper-focused on us at the same time, or like someone who has mentally snapped. There's really nothing I can do about it, except keep a close eye on the situation. One of my neighbors that lives in the complex told me that she can see him watching my yard when she goes out on her patio, and it really gives her the creeps as well. I always make sure my doors are locked, and I don't let my niece stay overnight anymore. Any ideas on what I should do? This happened around summer 2000 in Midwest USA and I was a 12-year-old boy. I was shy and never did well with confrontation. Anytime I was scared, I'd feel myself shaking. One day, my dad and cousin were weightlifting in the garage and it was open. I then decided to grab my bicycle out of the garage and ride up and down the street while my dad and cousin lifted. As I'm pedaling away from my house, I see another kid riding his bike probably five, six houses down from mine, but he's just kind of going in circles. I maybe get like 20 feet near him, but that's it. No words were exchanged, not even a wave or a nod. I just kept my head down and kept pedaling. On my next circle back down the street, that's when things got weird. I get near the area where the kid had been riding and he's not around anymore, so I guess he went inside wherever he lived. Right as I'm about to turn around and head towards my house, which is like probably 80-100 yards away, I hear a man yell, hey, in an unsettling tone. I look up and a man is standing in his front doorway probably 25 feet from me as I'm paused on the street with my bike. He's one of the creepiest looking dudes I've seen in my life. He has on a ball cap, and he's wearing these thick Jeffrey Dahmer looking glasses. Tan burnt orange dirty looking wrinkled skin and had to be in his 40s probably. He looked straight out of a horror movie and he just had this sinister angry look on his face. He then says, If you say anything to my son again I'm going to run your ass over. At this point I was crying and frozen with fear but then I start biking home faster than ever. I'd never been in a situation like this in my life. I couldn't believe what happened because I never said anything to that boy. So I get to the open garage where my dad and cousin are still lifting, tell them the story, and they decide to go to this guy's house and address the situation that just occurred. My dad and cousin had a few beers and are pretty jacked, so they were ready to tussle if needed. My dad goes straight to this guy's door with my cousin behind him and knocks loudly. The man opens the door and has this huge Rottweiler by his side barking and going crazy at my dad and cousin. He threatens to let the dog loose, but my dad and cousin aren't cowering down one bit. After a bit of bickering for a minute, the guy goes inside his house and shuts the door. Nothing else happens that night and we walk back home. A few days pass, and now I'm about to get to the creepiest part. During the summer when my parents worked during the day, my grandma would come over and babysit my little brother and I. We were about ten minutes from downtown and my grandma was going to take us there to grab food at Sonic. We get in her car and start driving down the road towards that creepy dude's house. This made me feel uneasy, but that's the direction we had to go. As we get closer to the house, the hair on my neck starts to stand up again. As we go by the house, I see him. He's sitting in a red truck in his driveway, facing the road like he's about to pull out. I don't remember well, but I think he might have even had a grin on his face when we drove by. We pass the house and he pulls out behind us. I start freaking out a bit, so I tell my grandma the story about the man driving behind us. At first my grandma was chill about it but then I noticed she seemed a bit shaken. This is because she had made about six, seven turns to throw him off our trail, but he kept following us. Every little turn. At this point, me and my brother are in the back seat with our heads down as he follows us, but luckily we made it downtown where it was busy. We get near the police station, I believe, and take another turn. Then finally he just passes on by. I never saw the man again. My mom and dad split up, and we left that neighborhood two years later with my mom to move to the country. 
My dad still lives at the same house, and I wonder if that dude stuck around for a while or even still lives at that house. What was his intent? Was it just a coincidence, or did he plan on following us? It was so weird how it looked like he was just waiting in his driveway for us to pass by. Oh man, let's see. There was the old hillbilly who'd always sit outside shirtless drinking a beer. Wouldn't have bothered me except that my dog, who loves everyone, freaked out every time we walked by him. There was the guy in the neighborhood I grew up in who got arrested for child porn and went to jail. But the one who personally creeped me out the most was a buff Jim bro type who lived a floor beneath me in an apartment building. I met him and his friends at the building's pool, and he hit on me and gave me a beer, not really weird for a building mostly full of students, and he asked me about where I worked again, not a big deal. Except that a few days later he showed up at my work to hit on me again. My little sister, who is much shyer and less comfortable with flirting, came to stay with me for a while. He hit on her too and gave her the creeps. A few months after all of this happened, I was walking the dog and came across a woman lying on the ground outside of the building, totally unresponsive when I tried to wake her up. I called 911 for her and the next day she came to my apartment to thank me and we talked for a long time. Turned out creepy guy had been her boyfriend and was physically abusive and she'd taken a sedative to calm down after a nasty fight, only it didn't mix well with alcohol duh, and she passed out while waiting for her friend to come pick her up. I was really relieved when that guy moved out. A number of years ago, a storm blew down a big section of fence between my yard and the house behind me. I went out to survey the damage before work, and the neighbor from the house behind me came over. I had never met him before. He was a big guy in sweats, reeking of cigarettes and body odor, with snot hanging from his nose. We started out talking about the fence, but it soon devolved into him telling me all about his lousy life, his nervous breakdown, his wife leaving him, his son getting married and pushing him away, and on and on and on. All the while standing too close to me, which of course made me step back, only to have him close the gap. And so our dance began. He effectively ended up chasing me in slow circles around the yard for about an hour because no matter how many times I said I needed to go, he just kept going on and standing close. I was too polite to tell him to STFU and needed his goodwill for mutual fence fixing. He was well-intentioned but obviously mentally ill. The whole incident really creeped me out. I ended paying for the whole fence repair because he had no money. For a couple years after that, he kept leaving food on my doorstep or in the backyard. He'd even sometimes throw candy bars over the fence. Again, well-intentioned but super creepy. I was so relieved when he finally moved out. I'm a 16-year-old guy, but last year I had a bad accident which almost killed me. Since then, I sometimes have chest pain and trouble breathing for no reason. My arms and legs also shake on their own sometimes. I live in the countryside on a big property with lots of bushes and trees. I'm really cautious and don't trust strangers. One night, it was 1.30 in the morning, and I was watching a movie on the couch while my parents were sleeping. My sister was out of town having fun. Suddenly, I saw a bright light outside that turned on because it sensed motion. The windows were closed, but the light was so strong that it shined through the gaps in the window blinds. Then I heard the back door making noise. I thought it was my sister returning from her night out, but she didn't come in for another 20 minutes. I asked her why she stayed outside for so long, and she said she had just gotten home. I thought it was probably the strong wind because there was a big storm that night. My sister and I went to bed in separate rooms. The next night at 1.15 am, I was in the kitchen making a sandwich which is connected to the garage. I should mention that my dog and cat sleep in the garage. Suddenly my dog started barking loudly and acting crazy for no apparent reason. I thought my dog was barking at the cat, but when he didn't stop after a minute, I got worried. I remembered what happened the night before. 
I'm always anxious, so I went to get a knife because the guns were in the garage. Just as I was about to enter the garage, my dog suddenly stopped barking. I listened at the garage door for a few minutes, but there was no noise. I felt really scared, so I decided to go to bed. I planned to talk to my parents about it the next day, but they didn't take it seriously. Now it's the next night, and it's 1.46 a.m. I was half expecting my dog to start barking again, and I had my knife ready. Just as I thought it happened, my dog went wild again, barking like crazy. This time I hurried to the garage, and as I got closer I heard noises inside. I was sure someone was in there. I opened the door quickly, but there was nothing there. I searched the whole garage, but I found nothing. I told my mom about it because my dad was away on a business trip. I suggested we might need to call the police, but she didn't believe me and said I couldn't call them. I went back downstairs, thinking maybe I was going crazy, that it was all in my head. That's when I heard a whistle coming through the window. I rushed to the window and opened the blinds, but there was nothing outside. As I headed towards the garage, I heard a tap and then another whistle at the kitchen window. I quickly opened the blinds and saw that the motion sensor light was on. I went into the garage to get a shotgun, but it was empty. I searched for the bullets but couldn't find any. Then I realized that not only were the shotgun bullets missing, but all the bullets for the rifle, pistol, and revolver were gone too. I heard three taps on the garage door next to me, followed by another whistle and a laugh. Fortunately, I knew where my dad had hidden the spare bullets. I got the bullets from the secret stash, which the person didn't find. When I returned to the living room, I heard more taps, whistles, and even laughter at every window. It was happening at the living room window, the kitchen window, the game room window, the garage window, and all over. The person kept tapping, whistling, and sometimes laughing at every window. I rushed out the door with my gun ready. The person had disappeared, or so I thought. When I looked up, I saw a tall, slim figure in a hoodie on the roof. I was about to shoot when I suddenly couldn't breathe due to my health condition. I fell to the cold ground, aiming my gun at the person on the roof, but my body started shaking uncontrollably because of my condition. The person jumped down and believe it or not, he put his lips right next to my ear and started whistling. I thought I was about to die. Then he walked towards my pool. After a few minutes, I managed to get back on my feet, using my shotgun like a walking aid because my legs were still shaking. I thought the person had left, so I went back inside, and this time my mom believed me. We were about to call the police when we looked out the window, and we actually saw the person's head popping out from our pool. The police came and searched our property. They found all the missing bullets in our shed. There were muddy footprints all over our property, and to make it even scarier, the words, oh no, were carved into the wall. We also found out that he got into the garage by moving a heavy metal plate that blocked a hole to the outside. It was a complete nightmare, the person who was whistling and laughing like a maniac. I dare you to come back so I can finish the job this time. Saw so crazy Paula. For context, my house is in a cul-de-sac, with my house being at the entrance and Crazy Paula's being at the very far end. She would become infuriated when I was a child when me and my brother would play football outside our own house, a solid 100-150 meter away from her house. She called the police on us once we were 9 and 11, and they showed up, laughed when they found out what was happening, and told her not to waste police time. About a week later, we were outside playing again, and we seen her getting into her car. Assuming she was driving out of the street, we stepped onto the pavement. Nope, she gunned her car straight at us, we jumped out of the way, and she went straight into the wall behind us. Then she called the police and said we made her crash her car. She got arrested, and I'm pretty sure she ended up in a mental hospital. Never seen her again after that. I lived in Center City, Philly while finishing college. Our apartment shared a stoop with a guy. Never learned his name, only saw him once. To set the scene, his house was a typical three-story townhome. 
We lived at basically Broad and Spring Garden, a block or two off. It's a decent enough area, not as scary as some of the city. Above us we have two Drexel College professors, and above them in my building are lawyers. Now next door. A typical three-story row home with a beautiful bow window that runs the entire height of the building. There were roughly 12-15 windows on the facade of the house, all of which we covered in tin foil. And in each window is a covered slit in the tin foil, so he could lift up the cover and peek through the slit to see what was going on below. On his door was spray painted, go away, don't sit on steps, don't leave trash, etc. Every now and they we would the little slits open especially on the main floor and his eyes just scan the area. We could hear him through our walls constantly banging around his house, screaming about monsters and God knows what else. One time and only one time we saw the man. He had was outside cutting the tree branches from the tree in front of our homes and he was standing on a ladder with a chainsaw for what could easily be done with a pair of hand cutters. He jumps off the ladder at some point after throwing down the chainsaw and lands square on the roof of the car below, screaming about how it shouldn't be parked there. It was a perfectly legal spot. I parked there every chance I got. We lived there for a year. Don't miss it. We had an entire creepy family live next door to us. My boyfriend and I were in our early 20s, first apartment together. Next door was a whole family originally from Europe and did the following things. Uncle would hit on me whenever I was out walking our dog. He asked me if I have any sisters he could date, but only if they looked just like you. One of the sons we were actually friends with him texted my boyfriend pretending to be the neighbor's fiance. She was asking if I, a female, would hook up with her and if we would be interested in swinging. Same son went rogue for a while. Family just said he went back to Europe. Turns out he was luring young girls to the local library and assaulting them. He was really doing time. My current upstairs neighbor. Guy never sleeps. I hear him walking around at all hours when I get up at 6 a.m. throughout the day when I go to bed around midnight. I often wake up throughout the night to hear him pacing around and groaning. I'm sure he's ill in some way and do feel bad for him, but it's the loud groaning that really gets me at 2.30 a.m. When I was around 7 I was walking home from the little play area at the end of my street and this random woman shouted me over to her house. She asked if I wanted to see her Lego models. I said yes and went in her house. Sure enough, she had the most amazing Lego stuff set up in her front room. Things like Star Wars ships built to a massive scale way before those Lego sets were a thing. I had a look at them, said I liked them, then left. It never happened again, and I don't think I told anyone about it at the time. She lived alone was probably in her 40s and didn't live on the street for very long. No idea what her story was, but if it had happened today, she'd almost certainly have been questioned by the police. When I moved in, I quickly noticed I had an alcoholic as a neighbor, and she had a son of about 18. She was harmless. Loud you could hear her down the street, but she was friendly and harmless. The son seemed worried about his mum all the time and I worried for him. He used to tell me he didn't want his mum to drink, but then would go to the shop and buy her booze. At first he seemed a decent kid in a shitty situation. I remember thinking he was a bit of a creep when he caught me coming into my house one day with my shopping, and he asked me if I had seen some strange lights over the road from our house. We overlook fields and horse stables, but in the distance can see lights of the next village or town, and there's like a narrow road going down past these fields so at night, sometimes your bedroom that faces that way can be lit up with the headlights of cars coming up it. So I gave all these reasons and explanations to him. That no I hadn't seen the lights, but maybe it was one of them he saw. No, it was hovering. In the sky. 
I just shrugged, thinking he must be into UFOs and that, and got on with my day. A few weeks later, though at about 10 p.m., I had banging on my front door. Now I lived alone with a toddler at the time, so I would usually have ignored it. But I heard my name being called, and I recognized the son's voice. Thinking something had happened to his mum drunkenly fallen over or something she did that a lot, I ran to the door. What's up? Is it your mum? Is your bedroom the one that's joined to my house? Or your little ones? It's my bedroom. Why? Oh, thank God. I've had an evil spirit in my bedroom, and it went through the wall that goes into your house, and I thought he was going to hurt your kid. Just keep an eye out, okay? And off he went back to his own house. Thankfully, they moved a few months after that. I didn't know how long I could keep hiding from them whenever I spotted them when leaving my house. My neighbor in high school had three sons, and were the nicest people. The father goes to church regularly, is always working on his lawn, and was just an all-around nice or cool dude. Never would have known that his job was that he worked for the government making or coming up with different weapons, think biological, bombs, all the above. The best part is he isn't the creepy neighbor, his middle son is. His middle son was expelled from my high school after I graduated for a bomb threat, and he had stuff in the basement to start making one. Add that in with the fact that his dad knew the ins and outs of all of it, and that makes for one seriously creepy kid. Not saying the dad told him how, but the son probably picked up the general ideas over time. If a dorm neighbor qualifies, then I have an interesting one. We had a triple of girls that lived diagonal to us. One girl will call us, she's the main event here. She did some crazy drugs and was always strung out, looking really fearful of everything and everyone and she had huge eyes with giant bags underneath them, and always had greasy hair hanging in chunks. We'd say hi, and it was like we just screamed in her face. Everything made her jump. But she would never say anything back to us, so eventually my roommates, and I realized we weren't doing anything good for either of us, and stopped. So generally a creepy girl. So one night at like 3 a.m., we hear the most blood-curdling screams. I have never heard, and probably never will unless I'm in some sort of disaster, a more helpless vocal cord tearing scream. Of course it was S. But at the time we were all just catastrophizing thinking there was a shooter and were too scared to see what was happening. We realized it was S, and that the screaming wasn't stopping anytime soon, so eventually we crept out into the hallway to see a barrage of cops and SRAs stationed outside S's locked door trying to get in while she's screaming from the inside. She was throwing herself against the walls and door as she yelled. Most of it was gibberish in between screams, but there were a couple, help me as well. They yelled at us to get back in our room, but we looked through our door's peephole and about 20 minutes later, EMTS come and take her out. Turns out she was tripping really bad and really hard, and the screaming was from breaking all of her own fingers one by one. After that, some friends moved her stuff out, and she never came back to school. Two sets, same condo right below ours, right in a row. Neither is what most would consider traditionally creepy, no weird noises coming from the apartment at odd hours, no mysterious black bags leaking a strange red fluid, no standing outside our door breathing heavily. But the first set was obsessed with us. Everything that was wrong in their lives was our fault. We made too much noise and it kept them awake all night. Our furniture was too squeaky. Our dog barked too much. Their dog was a yappy Pomeranian who would bark all day. But hey, whatever, we came home at weird times. They were practically stalking us to find fault with everything we did. My favorite thing that they did we used to feed the squirrels on our balcony peanuts in the shell in hopes that they'd quit eating the bird food did not work, and the squirrels would drop onto their balcony, eat the nuts, and leave the shells behind. Rather than say anything to us after they first noticed this happening as we had no idea this was going on, they gathered up the peanut shells for two months, 
put them into a little baggie, and finally the husband came up to knock on our door and scream at us about how the squirrels had deposited 23 peanut shells on his balcony in that time. They reported us to the management company so many times that the management company just stopped sending us letters about our behavior and would just occasionally send the president of the board around to tell us to try and be less human, because people who should never have lived in multifamily living felt entitled to the experience of a single-family home. The worst part is that if you confronted them about this behavior and asked them to stop being so insane and just come talk to us when they had problems, they'd blame each other and say that the other one was crazy and that they themselves were sane and totally okay with our behavior. We were constantly on our toes. Also, they blamed us for their dog's collapsed trachea because she spent all day barking at the squirrels. They did not see why them hitting the lock button on the retractable leash attached to her collar and choking her when she was yanked to a sudden stop might be causing damage. The second set weren't nearly as bad. They were a very friendly boyfriend and girlfriend pair. Very quiet, never complained, we asked them about our actions affecting them frequently after stalker neighbors, friendly if you caught them outside of the condo. But if you needed to talk to them while they were inside their condo, they wouldn't open the door. You had to shout through the door, and if they decided they wanted to talk to you, they'd open the door just a crack and talk to you like that. They didn't have any pets, so it wasn't to keep the cat from running out or whatever. They just didn't want people to see inside their apartment, which was super creepy and weird. They also apparently had a ton of money because the woman was constantly ordering things online, and they took vacations all the time. We joked that they either had a grow up or a meth lab in the house, and their lives were funded through drug money. Well, potential Breaking Bad couple moved out a few months ago, and a new guy has moved in. He's barely ever home, and I've only actually seen him once so I can't confirm whether or not he's following in his predecessor's footprints. Our neighbors across the breezeway are definitely the creepy neighbors in our section of the complex. There is a guy and presumably his girlfriend. They keep to themselves and are fine. However, recently an older lady has moved in with them. Or is visiting. Really, I don't know but she has really bad energy and seems to be mentally ill. She looks almost exactly like him, so I presume it is his mom. Yesterday, we were going out to pick up stuff for dinner, and this old lady was standing at 5.30 p.m. in her bathrobe that was not fully closed, behind a bush with a giant stick, staring up the lawn. She had a phone in her hand and was telling someone on the phone that they were after here, and she was spying on them and how they spotted her. We got back and the stick was propped by the door. Last week she asked my partner if we lived in X apartment and then rushed off. We think she's harmless, but she's clearly suffering from some paranoia and it gives us the creeps having her across the hall from us. When I was a kid, the next door neighbor asked my parents to come over every day and feed their dog. One day I went with them and what I saw was unbelievable. When my dad opened the front door, cockroaches went scattering. Being the nosy little kid I was, I started looking around. I went into the kitchen and opened some of the drawers. More cockroaches, some alive, some dead. I opened the microwave, exploded cockroaches. I walked down a hallway and looked into one of the bedrooms and it was filled with Cabbage Batch Kid dolls. After that, I told my parents that I was going back home. So I can answer this for my wife. About a year after we moved into our house, she got in a fight with the guy next door over something stupid, don't even remember what. And now for the last four years, when he, his wife, or their parents see my wife outside, they film her on their phones. It doesn't matter if she's just walking from the house to her car to leave for work, or if she's sitting outside on our porch, the creeps next door can be seen filming her. They do a bunch of other weird stuff too, like call the city about our lawn every week even though nothing is wrong with it. Had the police over a few times for a noise complaint when we were not even home. For two years in a row they have raked their leaves onto my lawn. 
I could go on and on about these freaks. Thank God we are moving soon. I never had a creepy neighbor, but my friend did when new neighbors moved into the house next to his. They have a fairly secluded backyard with tall trees, tall fences, and a balcony over their hot tub. You can only really see it from inside the house or directly in front of it in the yard. Every time people would go outside, creepy Mr. Jones next door would grab a beer and sit on his deck, facing their house and try and catch a glimpse of people hot tubbing. Spring rolled around and the trees fully bloomed, completely blocking his view of their backyard. One weekend when they were gone and he didn't know I was stopping by to feed the cats, I caught him trying to cut the tree down for a better view. I called my friend and he booked it home. The trees were nowhere near his property and when confronted he ran. Apparently the owner of his house didn't do a background check. Turns out creepy Mr. Jones spent some time in a big building with many grumpy people because he had a desire to touch little girls and boys. I used to live in a duplex and I had a neighbor that was around the same age as me at the time 14 or 15. I never saw him leave the house but he would stare out the window and I could always feel him staring at me. This guy would constantly have tantrums so loud that I could hear it through the walls. He'd scream things like, I want something to do, accompanied by sounds of furniture or dishes breaking. One day I noticed that there was a hole in the drywall of the connecting basement in which you could directly see into the other side. I didn't think much of it and my mom and I stuffed some clothes in it. A few weeks later in one of the bedrooms that shared a wall with the other duplex developed a small hole in the wall that we never noticed before. Again we thought nothing of it and stuffed some paper in it. I'd often hear sounds in the attic, scratching, sometimes thumping. I thought maybe it was a squirrel or rodent of some sort. Not too long after this, items from the house started going missing, mostly underwear, bras, some money. We found out that once we moved the attics had been connected, and this boy was crawling through over to our side of the house when we weren't home. Creepiest place I have lived for sure. neighbor obsessed by me. This happens four years ago. I was pregnant and single when I moved into a house owned my friend's parents. They were wonderful people. The house needed some work, but nothing major and perfect for me. Or so I thought. I live in a medium big city and never really had much to do with my neighbors. One neighbor was a single male, older than me and always home. I figured he was on disability or something like that. But as I didn't feel the need to be close to my neighbor, I shrugged it off. At some point things started to be a bit weird, notes he put in the mail, looks etc. I just ignored him and asked my former roommate what she knew. Turns out the guy was funny. Then he started blogging about me on Facebook on his blog. Things went really bad when my son was born. He wrote the most creepy things, he listens to my every move in my house. The post got sexually explicit. He tried to force encounters, made contraptions to hang notes over the fence into my garden, etc. I became very unsure and scared, especially when I contacted the police about stalking, and they warned me that if I made an official complaint, he would be entitled to know I did, and he was known to become violent. I started work to get every type of help I could, and had to keep sleeping a night a week in the house, so he would keep being triggered to build a case. I was scared shitless he would hurt me or my baby. He kept writing the sexual stories about me, kept observing my every move, commenting on my visitors, etc. At some point I managed to get a new apartment from the council, due to the dangerous situation. The man is extremely mentally unstable, and I avoid my old neighborhood like the plague to this day. Window Creep I was really young when this happened. My mom told me the story when I mentioned a house we used to live in, and the neighbor she told me never to talk to. We lived in a quiet area, and our house didn't have any fences, except the partial one separating a bit of our yard from the neighbors on one side. On both sides, the neighbors were very nice people. 
I was about four, so my mom told me about strangers and never to talk to the man who lived on the other side of our neighbors. He looked like a normal guy, and once he even smiled and waved at me, but I'd find out why I couldn't talk to him. One night, I was sitting in my room, it was just me and my parents' home, and my mom told me it was time to get ready for bed. She looked up at the window, where some of the blinds were broken, and saw part of a face. She flipped out, and the face moved away. She ran into the living room where my dad was, and told him what happened. They got outside just in time to see the guy hiding behind his fence. My parents made me sleep with them that night. The next morning, my mom wanted to make sure he didn't leave any weird stuff laying around, and it was all clear. But she wanted to know how much you could see from the hole in the blinds. My window was kind of out of the way, but when she got there, there was an indent in the ground as if this guy had been visiting for a while. He was staring in my bedroom window. This is mild compared to many of the experiences on here, but it still shook me up and left me feeling unsafe in my own home. Three or four years ago, my husband and I and our young children lived next door to a family that we didn't really get along with. They hated animals of all kinds. We love animals and have multiple pets. They hated trees and were cutting down all the trees on their property. We love trees and planted several. That's not the creepy part, just background. I'll call the husband Dan. One day I was in my bedroom with the curtains opened and one of the windows faced the neighbor's yard. I was just sitting on my bed folding laundry next to the window when I got that feeling that someone was watching me. I looked up and saw Dan standing at the edge of his yard, right by the chain link fence, staring at me through the window. I was fully dressed, but the way he was looking at me chilled me. What scared me even more was what he did the next time he saw my husband. They were both out in the yards when Dan motioned my husband over to the fence and started telling him a long, convoluted, detailed story about how the previous owner of our house had been sneaking around trying to peep in his windows to see his wife. The way that he told the story sounded like he was trying to somehow cover his own tracks by accusing someone else of doing what he had been doing. At that point I hadn't even confronted Dan about it and had only briefly mentioned it to my husband. Dan telling his rather unbelievable story, the first chance he got convinced me that he hadn't just innocently glanced up through my window. He had been intentionally watching me. A couple months later when it snowed I saw footprints in the new snow cutting across our yard and stopping directly under my front window, facing it, only about a foot or two away from it. It immediately freaked me out. The snow was untouched other than that. I followed the steps back to, you guessed it, Dan's house. He had literally walked over to my house, looked in the window, and walked straight back to his house. The creepy fool even did it in the new snow and left tracks. Not long after that Dan was having a heated discussion with my husband, because Dan had gotten angry with us because of our dog jumping at the fence when he got excited about seeing another dog. He claimed that he didn't want the fence touched at all because he had noticed it was starting to tilt. Fair enough. I made a point of ensuring that our dog stayed away from the fence, but then I saw one of his daughters literally climbing up the fence and rocking it back and forth as far as it would go obviously the real reason the fence had stated to tilt. I was pissed because of how much he had bitched about it being my dog's fault. When my husband talked to Dan about it, Dan quickly became angry and claimed that he would be able to provide video evidence that his daughter hadn't done it. Oh, how? Dan proceeded to tell us that he had cameras facing into our yard, and that he could see everything we did. When I got mad and probed about that, he quickly backtracked and said he didn't. But guess what? When they finally moved, I saw him taking carefully hidden cameras off his house and garage. They had been facing my house. This sounds mild, I know, but there were several other instances that sounded small on their own but altogether culminated in me feeling crazy, unsafe, and like I was being watched all the time. It was a terrible feeling and I did feel afraid of my neighbor. If they hadn't moved then I know I would have solely to get away from them. I stopped going in my yard. I started closing my curtains despite enjoying the sunlight. I started to wonder when he was watching. It freaked me the F out.
This was in 2018, probably around 10 at night. My sister 15 female at the time and I 18 female at the time played volleyball together for our high school and obviously would ride home together after our games. Our mom was probably about 10 minutes behind us. I live about 30 minutes outside of town in a little neighborhood out in the country, so all of my neighbors and I live down gravel roads. The neighborhood has no street lights so it's pitch black outside, except for my car's headlights. As we're pulling up to turn onto our gravel road, we notice a person wearing a black hoodie standing by our neighbor's mailbox. It was hard to make out what he or she really looked like. Of course I just stopped the car and we both stared at this strange person. We knew it wasn't one of our neighbors because we've lived there our whole lives and none of our neighbors would be out just taking a walk in the middle of the night, so it was definitely weird. As we're staring this person starts walking towards my car, and I obviously freak out and whip a U-turn in our driveway and book it down the neighborhood road. I could have just turned into our driveway and went home, but didn't want the person to follow us because we're just two teenage girls and would be home alone till our mom got there. I called my grandma who lives like five minutes away and explained the situation to her and we went to her house. Called my mom also and told her not to go home and that we were at our grandma's house. My mom called our neighbor and they called the sheriff but the guy was gone. We went back home and ended up all sleeping in the same bed in case the creepy person came back. It was definitely a creepy or unsettling encounter because who knows what this person wanted or if they would have followed my car down the driveway and potentially did something to my sister and I. I'm just glad I turned around and left, never saw the person again. Strange guy staring at my house. This afternoon I went downstairs and into my kitchen for a cup of coffee, and as I typically do, had a flu glances out the window towards the pathway leading into my cul-de-sac from a nearby park. Nothing out of the ordinary, neighbor was out getting something from her car and scolding her kids. I notice an old white man, white hair and a beige, or maybe a more faded earthy green jacket walking slowly along the path leading past my house, and to the road leading out of the area. I look down at my cup for just a moment, then back up. What happened next made me very uncomfortable. This guy stops dead in his tracks, staring forward, then turns his full body directly towards me and just stands there, staring right at me. I thought he might just be a perv checking out my neighbor, so I sway back and forth from his line of sight on me at my window to see if I can make out whether or not he's staring to my right at her. But no, he's still standing right there, watching me. I decide to hold and stare back at him for a few moments to maybe make him as unnerved as I was, but he continues staring. He was so unnaturally still, almost like a statue. I wondered if I was looking at a ghost for a good few seconds. I sigh a tad nervously, go back to my drink, and then glance back up, contemplating flipping him off or shrugging in a what's your problem kind of way. He then calmly turned back around and continued walking up the street like nothing happened. He must have been standing there for 20 or 30 seconds. I haven't been able to stop thinking about this all day. It keeps popping back into my head. It was like a scene out of It Follows or The Happening. There's just no way he would have known I was looking at him. There are cars parked in front of my home, a big ass tree bushes. It's almost as if he heard me, as crazy as that sounds. The scariest thing to me is that I don't think anyone else noticed or even saw him. No one else reacted to him at all. There's a man who comes into my yard at night. I've grown increasingly unnerved over the past three days, as I'm not sure how to explain what's been happening, but I'll do my best. Three days ago, my St. Bernard started whining to go outside around 3 a.m. or so. My girlfriend sleeps through it, so I'm always the one to get up and take care of the dogs. We have four. I live on five acres of land in the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. For perspective, my house is in the front of my property and the acreage is all in the back. We have a normal sized backyard and then a barbed wire fence that separates the backyard from the large field. The reason for the barbed wire is so that coyotes and other predators cannot get into the yard and harm the dogs. I have neighbors, although they're spread out pretty far from us. Back to my dog waking up. 
She usually sleeps through the night with no problems, so it was a little strange, but nothing too weird. However, she did the same thing the next night as well. This is when I started to pay attention. The third night I decided to go out with her on the leash. I wanted to make sure that she was only using this time outside to go to the bathroom instead of an excuse to go play in the yard at night. As soon as I opened the door, she was pulling on the leash towards our big field. Only when we got about 20 feet from the fence, she stopped and was just staring straight ahead towards the field. I, of course, then looked out into the field to see what she might be staring at, but I couldn't see anything. After about three minutes of her staring into the field, she started to growl, which she never does. I looked again, and what I saw was unnerving. I'll do my best to describe it, but I apologize, as I'm not a professional writer. I looked into the field and saw what looked like a tall man dressed in an old-fashioned jacket and top hat. It was shocking enough to see someone on my property at that time of night, but what really unnerved me was how he was moving. There was something off about it. First of all, he was walking towards me, but his steps were weird, like a bride walking down the aisle at a wedding. Step, pause, step, pause. After about ten steps, he made a right turn and continued following the fence. He then made another right turn and was walking away from the fence. He seemed to be walking in a big square pattern. My first thought was that it was someone on drugs or drunk, but his movements were very deliberate and coordinated. Not at all like someone under the influence. I didn't feel that this person was a threat, so I took my dog inside. I didn't want her barking up a storm and waking my girlfriend and went back out to try to talk to him. Of course, there was no one there. So the next day, I went to all of my neighbors and asked them about it. None of them owned a top hat like this person was wearing. They all thought it was creepy, but had no explanation. I think many of them thought I was the one under the influence. So that night, my dog started whining at 1.47 a.m., so out we went. Sure enough, out in the field looked to be the same person, top hat and all, step, pause, step, pause. I don't know what to do. I want to get this on video because I hate this feeling of everyone thinking I'm crazy. I haven't told my girlfriend yet, but this is really starting to get to me. Please help. For those of you who may not know, I have written about my next door neighbor and the weird behavior she has exhibited before. Some examples are like spying on us from her window. Walking in when we leave the door unlocked, usually only leave the door unlocked if my dad is doing so stuff in the yard and inviting herself to places. Of course, this behavior is annoying, but we can't help but feel bad for her since she's an elderly woman and lived alone in a two-story home. We felt like she acted brash out of her loneliness and wanting human interaction. Recently, when the pandemic began, her son, roughly mid-30-ish, moved in with her. Her son plus the pandemic has obviously limited our interaction with her to almost zero and my family and I were happy to both not be bothered by her anymore and that she was no longer home alone throughout the pandemic. But our peacefulness didn't last that long. Around March when the weather was getting warm my family and I were sitting in the living room watching a show together. For your information my family consists of my father, younger sister 16 years, and myself female 19 years usually when we're in the living room and it's cool outside, we will leave the door open to let some air and we're literally right there keeping an eye out on the door. Everything was fine and we watched two episodes until I noticed my dad started to turn to look out the door frequently making me feel uneasy, but just thought maybe he saw someone he recognized. Five minutes of him continuing to turn towards the door passed by until he gets up and shuts the door, immediately locking it. My sister and I look at him confused, and my dad tells us that our neighbor's son had been standing outside looking directly inside the house for a while. This was obviously odd, but my sister and I just brushed it off as him being as noisy as his mother and continued watching the rest of whatever episode we were on in the show. Some time passed by and my sister and I go to our rooms in which I immediately knock out because I'm not a night owl. Also tonight was one of the rare nights where my sister and I slept with our windows open to let in some air. We usually just blasted the AC. At around 2 a.m. I wake up to hearing creaking outside my door and loud music being played outside. 
I usually sleep with my door closed and creaking is normal to happen in the house since the house is pretty old. I try to dismiss it and return to sleep until I hear my sister whisper my name from the other side of the door. I get up annoyed and open the door to see my sister visibly shaking and scared. I immediately get shaken up too because my sister isn't known for being jumpy, I am. My sister whispered to me how she had heard footsteps outside her window pacing back and forth for a while and then walking in and out the neighbor's house. My sister annoyed looked out the window and saw that it was our neighbor's son. A few minutes passed and suddenly loud music started playing right outside our windows. She mentioned how she felt uneasy and just laid in her bed until she saw the light of a flashlight shining into her window. Thankfully we both have blackout curtains, but the fact that this dude was shining a flashlight into her window rightfully so freaked her out. We live in the second story, so there is no way someone has just happened to shine a flashlight upwards towards a window in the second floor. My sister and I just stand in the hallways debating on what to do until we decided to go wake up my dad who was already awake due to the loud music our neighbor's son started playing at 2 a.m. Once we tell my dad everything H.E. immediately gets out of bed and goes to our rooms to help us shut our windows. The odd thing is second the neighbor's son heard my dad's voice when we he was in our rooms. The music suddenly got turned off and we heard him go inside the house. My sister and I have a feeling the reason why he was playing his music so loud was to drown out whatever noise he was making or gonna make, and that's horrifying to think about. Now about three weeks ago a new event occurred with said neighbor's son. Ever since the last even happened my sister, and I had not opened our windows at all because that was very unsettling, and we didn't want anything repeating itself with different outcomes. But one afternoon it started to rain hard and the gutters were gunked up causing the rain started to get into the house, and for some reason specifically in my room. Let's also keep in mind that our house is literally 100 years old and has been through a lot. After the rain stopped I had to sleep with my window open to let everything dry out to avoid mold. Hesitantly I slept with it open and convinced myself that nothing was going to happen because it was wet outside but I still slept with my pepper spray on my nightstand. Thankfully I slept through the night without interruptions and woke up to do my usual routine. And at around 9 when I'm in my bedroom trying to enjoy my coffee, I suddenly hear a lot of noise right outside my window. There was so much noise that even my sister woke up and came into my room confused. We both just froze listening trying to not even breathe too loud until we hear a familiar noise causing us to both look at each other to confirm it. This dude had a ladder against his mom's house, and it was just at the height of my window. My sister and I immediately leave my room slamming the door behind us to let him know. We did let my dad know and my sister, and I even have a picture of him on the ladder right next to my window. We're not sure what to do since his behavior is creepy, but not enough for us to get anyone involved. And we don't even know whether or not we should bring up to our neighbor in case her son will take it wrongly and do something worse. If you have any advice, please let me know and stay safe out there. It was the summer of 2016, and I had recently gotten married, so we moved to a nice neighborhood and lived in a townhouse. Everything was going well. After a few months, I found out that I was going to have a baby. My husband and I were very happy, and so were our families. Now, here's the important part of the story. My mom and dad lived in a townhouse right next to ours, and my grandparents lived in one between mine and my parents. We all loved the place, and the townhouses were really nice. So, we decided to live in the same place to stay close to each other. My husband enjoyed going fishing at a local fishing competition that our town hosted every weekend, but the fishing tournament would finish really late. I used to just stay at home most of the time due to a couple of reasons. First, I felt sick a lot and was nauseous all the time. Second, I couldn't stand the smell, especially being pregnant. Since I didn't have much else to do, I would go outside to get some fresh air and spend time with my mom and grandparents in the evenings. That's when everything began. I started to notice that my neighbor was acting very strangely. He lived in the last townhouse at the very end of the complex. Every evening, my creepy neighbor would drive into the complex and park his car in a way that gave him a clear view of me and my family when we were sitting outside. 
Then he would simply go and check his mail. After checking his mail, he would just sit there for a long time, sometimes 30 minutes to an hour, just looking at us while we sat on my Nana's porch. But I think he was only looking at me because I could barely see his face, and his eyes were locked onto mine. His face looked so blank, and it really gave me the creeps. He did this every single evening. When I told my family, they got scared too. One day, I decided to go to the fishing pond with my husband and my dad for the evening. Well, it didn't last too long, to be honest. A few hours later, I started feeling sick, so I had to go back home. I told my husband that if I felt better, I'd come back later. He agreed and told me to go home and rest. So, I went back home, watched a movie or two, and by the time it was time to pick up my husband, I was feeling a bit better. I had dropped him off earlier in the evening, so I grabbed my keys and headed across town to pick him up. We were on our way home and approaching a red traffic light when I noticed a car coming up fast behind my truck. I told my husband to look at the driver because the car was getting dangerously close to the back of our truck, almost touching the bumper. The car was really close to my truck, almost touching it, when the traffic light turned green. I drove off quickly, but I noticed the car just stayed there. I told my husband to look, and right when I said that, the car started moving and its headlights turned off. It was around 2 a.m. at this point. Oh my goodness, look, I said. My husband replied, I know, just focus on the road. I glanced in my rearview mirror, and the car had turned its lights back on, and the driver was now speeding up to catch up with us with the high beams on. As he got closer, he turned off his headlights again. My husband could tell how scared I was, and I think he was getting a little freaked out too. I finally reached our townhouse complex and pulled in. The car behind me turned on its lights and followed me in. The car stopped when I continued driving to park in my spot. After parking our truck, I looked at my husband, and we both agreed not to get out of the truck. We watched the entrance, and the car began to move slowly down the road. We got a good look at the car, and that's when I realized it was our creepy neighbor. He parked his car and got out standing on his porch, staring at our truck. A few minutes later, he went inside his house. My husband and I just looked at each other in shock. Who on earth does that? I said to my husband. He shook his head and sighed, and then we went inside. We couldn't believe what had just happened. We both agreed that he was extremely strange, and that we should avoid him as much as possible. Another time that really gave me the creeps was when I was at a red traffic light and this time I was alone in my car. I happened to glance in my rearview mirror and saw the neighbor in the car right behind me. He was so close that he almost bumped into me. When I looked back at him, I noticed he had a really disturbing expression on his face. The feeling I got when I saw him was so terrifying that I can't even put it into words. He had his head down, looking up with both his hands on the steering wheel, and he just seemed really angry, like he was acting strangely. When the traffic light turned green, I started driving, and he was still following me closely. So, I sped up a bit, and he did the same. I was starting to get really worried by this point. I kept thinking, what if he crashes into me? I'm six months pregnant, and this could harm my baby. He was still tailgating me, and he still had that same scary look on his face. It honestly seemed like he wanted to harm me. So, I quickly turned on my left turn signal and pulled over to the right. I did that to distract him so I could get away without him following me. But when I pulled off the road quickly, he got dangerously close to the back of my truck, nearly causing an accident. I called my husband and explained what had just happened. At that point, I was really shaken up. I managed to calm down and went back home. As I entered our complex, I saw him at the mailbox checking his mail. I parked the truck and then I called my mom, asking her to come down. I told her everything that had just happened. Then I quickly got out of my car and went into my house, making sure everything was locked and secure. My sister, who's like the family detective, started looking into this more. We soon found out that he was a convicted murderer who had done something terrible. This guy had killed his partner and stayed with a dead body for days. Then he had plans to get rid of the body, but luckily he got caught before he could. He tried to argue that he was insane but they didn't buy it, and he ended up in prison. He served his time, but was released a few years earlier than he should have been. 
Once I found out about his past, I became very paranoid, so I made sure to lock all the doors and windows to feel safe. I also carried a legal gun with me wherever I went. I was scared of him, and I had every reason to be. A couple of months passed, and one day, when my dad and husband were working on the truck, my mom, my newborn baby, and I were sitting on the porch trying to enjoy the evening. We noticed his car pulling into the complex, and he was playing the song, I've had the time of my life, from the movie Dirty Dancing really loudly. He was driving slowly down the road just like before. He parked his car in his spot, then backed up to get a clear view of me and my mom. He turned his car all the way around to stare at us with the song still blasting. My mom and I told my husband and dad to go check on what he was doing. They had enough of his weird behavior. They said they were going to ask him why he was staring at us. When he saw them walking toward his car, he quickly sped off down the alleyway. I doubt I'll ever be able to listen to that song again without thinking of that guy. Thanks for ruining it for me. But luckily, he moved out not long after that, and I couldn't have been happier. Finally, I could feel safe in my own home again. Sometimes I see him in town, and it instantly reminds me of how scared he used to make me feel. Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.